Welcome to the Cinema Gold Show with your host, Larry Lease. Join us as Cinema Gold dives into the latest Hollywood film and TV news and everything in between. Tune in each weekday on your favorite podcast platform. Hello and welcome to the Cinema Gold Show. Today we're continuing our series Classic Rewind with our review of Chappie, directed by Neil Blomkamp. He's once again fashioned a brawny sci-fi spectacle which views humanity's flaws with unflinching grimness. But despite his ambitions, Chappie is a bucket of bolts. His desire to say meaningful things, outdistancing his abilities to say them compelling. Chappie benefits from the star power of Hugh Jackman, Sojourney Weaver, and Dev Patel. But the biggest draws of this release are probably Blomkamp and its robot comes alive premise, both of which will attract sci-fi fans. They didn't make the most of its two weeks in the marketplace before Insurgent. Chappie managed to do solid business, although mediocre reviews kind of put a ceiling on its potential. Chappie introduced its familiar premise from the outset as a way to combat rising crime. Authorities have created an elite team of mechanized police officers called scouts, which have restored law and order. Their inventor, Dion, wants to take the next step, though developing a program that will give the robots consciousness an advancement that his boss, the all-business head of a weapons company, shoots down. Undeterred, Dion reboots a damaged scout who is soon dubbed Chappie, with the ability to think, dream, and learn. That cursory overview of Chappie's plot helps to avoid the weeds in which the film gets lost. Scripted by Blomkamp and his district and co-writer Terry Tatchell, Chappie is on one level a predictable journey of an innocent, innocent who discovers humanity's harsh, peculiar ways. But, however, it invests a lot of emotion and ambition in the cliché juggling several storylines that all tie back into Chappie's unlikely coming of age. First, there's a group of low-life gangsters led by Ninja of the high of the hip-hop collective Die Antwoord, who steal Chappie from Dion who, to use as a weapon only to become the robot's surrogate parents. Then we have Vincent, Dion's buff co-worker and former soldier who wants to replace the scouts with a far more militarized police force, which requires him plotting to discredit Dion's invention. But rather than adding world-building complexity to his vision, Chappie's motley ensemble only clutters the narrative. If the story wasn't overstuffed enough, the gangsters also have to spend time worrying about a rival gang. Perhaps not surprisingly, the film works best when it's st- sticking to well-worn robot out-of-water plot points. Visually, Chappie's a nifty feat. Frequent Blomkamp collaborator Charlto Copley played the robot Sans costume alongside the other actors, and then an effects team created Chappie digitally in post-production around him. As a result, Chappie feels remarkably lifelike, his human companions interacting with him persuasively. It's expected that Chappie, who starts off with a toddler's demeanor, will face obvious obstacles as he learns how to speak and behave. Much like District 9 and Elysium, which we will cover next week, Chappie seeks to be a warning about our failings as a society. And as is often the case with Camp's work, Chappie makes its points without subtly, although that's not to say that they can't be affecting. Most intri- intriguingly, the film observes as Chappie falls under the influence of his foul-mouthed, uncouth gangster buddies, and there's a suggestion that bad behavior isn't something that's passed down, but rather learned through experience. The brainy, ineffectual Dion fights for the soul of Chappie. He insists that he's Chappie's maker, as if that gives him ownership of the robot. But because the thugs spend more time with him, the machine can't help but take after them. But these intellectual notions, along with tedious ruminations about the mystery of consciousness, are never explored with sufficient insight or curiosity. Instead, they're just part of the hodgepodge, alongside an unimaginative Mad Max-like future of armed criminals with terrible haircuts and silly wardrobes meant to suggest how frightening the road ahead could be, unless we change our ways. Plus, as Blomkamp demonstrated with his previous two films, Chappie is happy to put messages aside when it's time for the third act fireworks. In concert with composer Hans Zimmer, whose score 
is arousingly bombastic with shades of future tech paranoia and editors Julian Clark and Mark Goldblatt. He dishes out the action sequences near the end, pushing the spectacle and emotion to such extremes that it's hard not to get swept up in the overkill. But then remembers, then one remembers the cartoonish performances. Jack Jackman and Weaver are dispiritingly one note. He's all buffoonish, meathead villainy. She's nothing but Ice Queen contempt, while the members of Die Antwoord play their thug characters as simplest brutes whose eventual change of heart generates a little pathos. Even the understated Patel gets lost in the machine of the wild vision and threadbare ideas. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Cinema Gold Show. Let us know your thoughts on this movie and let us know what else, what other movies you'd like us to review. You can send us a tweet at Cinema Gold Show or leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform and Apple Podcasts. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. You have been watching the Cinema Gold Show. Thank you for watching. Follow us on Twitter at Cinema Gold Show and on our YouTube channel. Just search Cinema Gold. Support the show by buying us a coffee at https colon slash slash www.buymeacoffee.com slash cinema gold. <laughs>